So in the last, in the last five minutes, I want to say, you, we don't need this argument. We don't need to worry about very, very long-term effects to make the case, as, as Johan pointed out, um, that um, for, for the emission policies, which we need to see to keep the Earth on a sustainable path within the next few decades. So this, I just want to, 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 to tell you about another way of framing the climate challenge, which uh, research I've been involved in, and there's some parallel work also led by Malte Meinshausen at the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impacts Research, um, which really focused on a, a different way of framing the whole challenge of avoiding dangerous climate change. Um, and you can think of what we, you can, if you wanted to sum this up as saving the trillionth ton of carbon. Let me take you quickly through the over, an overview of the study I'm referring to. And what we did was we generated idealized CO2 emission scenarios. We varied the initial growth, the rate at which we make a transfer, the rate at which it slows, and so forth. But crucially, in, in this study, we, the aim was to stabilize temperatures, not concentrations. So we assumed that um, emissions, once they'd reached some rate of decline, they would carry on declining until temperatures peaked, not until concentrations stabilized. And it's important. It, it does... Uh, imply an important distinction. So here's some examples of the sort of emission profiles we get. And so that's a, one of these profiles which sort of carries on uh, declining because temperatures don't peak until way out here. Uh, but here's how a stabilization scenario might spin off and uh, start to level off as, uh, um, as, uh, as, you, as you reach uh, stabilization. So crucially, what, what we looked for was, you know, what's the predictor? What's the element? What's the aspect of these scenarios that predicts the risk of dangerous climate change. And the, the punchline is that you can take three different scenarios uh, with very different timing of emissions, very different emissions in 2020, but the same area under the curve, the same total, the same cumulative carbon emissions over all time, over the entire Anthropocene, and they give you very, very similar temperature responses. So it doesn't matter how slowly or fast you release the carbon. What matters is the total amount you release. And this uh, is the sort of, you know, just to illustrate this point, um, uh, a student, uh, uh, Neil uh, Bauman, uh, has been looking at, you know, how, to, how relating cumulative emissions under all these different scenarios with emissions at different points in the future, which have been proposed as targets. Now, the colors here show, if you like, climate damage, the peak warming. And notice that the, the, the colors change in the vertical. They don't change in the horizontal. So as far as the climate system is concerned, Mother Earth doesn't care whether we're emitting 8 or 14 gigatons of carbon in 2020. Before anybody misquotes me on this, of course, I have to stress our, our children may care a lot if we commit them to reductions of 8% per year or only 3% per year in the 2040s. Okay? But Mother Earth doesn't care. Okay. Um, emissions in 2050, interestingly, are a better indicator of the total, but it's still the total that matters. The color contours run horizontally. And another, another guide which has been proposed is total emissions to 2050. Again, these only matter as an indicator of total emissions overall. So um, just to, put, to show you why this matters, this curve relates cumulative emissions over the Anthropocene to peak CO2-induced warming, and now you see some of the uncertainty in this. And I'm just relating this to past emissions have taken us to there. <coughs> Conventional oil and gas take us to there. Oil, gas, and coal take us to there. And if you include it all, we're well up into this territory where we are more than capable of um, raising planetary temperatures well above the uh, habitable limit. Okay, so that's my argument for why we should frame the climate boundary in terms of cumulative carbon dioxide emissions, um, because you know, the science says clearly that we need to limit cumulative emissions to avoid dangerous climate change, and it's easier to frame controls in terms of cumulative emissions than it is in terms of very long-term CO2 concentration targets, which are very difficult to predict. Um, and to bring it all together um, rather nicely, um, there is a, a, a relationship between this trillionth ton, this one trillion ton limit, and the um, 350 ppm. So having sort of started off by 
criticizing the argument for 350 ppm, I'm now going to say I can, I can actually arrive at the same number by a different argument, but without invoking a six degree climate sensitivity. Basically, 350 ppm is what you get in the very long term if you dump a trillion tons into the atmosphere. So I think there's a, there's a I'm, I'm not, argue, we're not, we're not, I'm not disagreeing at all on what needs to be done, although I think we may sort of disagree on, on the way the scientific, the way the scientific argument could be framed as to why. Um, and uh, just to sort of um, give, a, give the punchline here, um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that the, the, um, this sort of work might maybe sort of taken up, maybe considered by the discussions uh, building up to Copenhagen, because it really does make a difference to the kind of measures, if you just focus on measures to reduce emissions in 2020, um, the, the measures, some measures will help reduce the overall CO2 released in the atmosphere, others will not. And, 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 we, it, and we have a real problem that just by focusing on short-term emission reductions, we may actually, in some cases, make the overall problem worse um, by, for example, you know, some, 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 some uh, short-term measures for reducing emissions may actually make the overall burden of carbon being released into the atmosphere over the Anthropocene worse. So I'm really hoping that somehow we can persuade the, the, the negotiators in Copenhagen. I don't know how I can get messages into that field. It's a very hermetically sealed sort of process. Um, that, that, that somehow persuade them to acknowledge the need to limit cumulative emissions of carbon dioxide um, as part of their long-term vision for avoiding dangerous climate change. Thank you. <laughs>